Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with yet another in-depth, unbiased gear review. Now, there are kayaks out there that are really performance driven. And then there's other kayaks that are just fun. And then there are some kayaks that are plainly beautiful. And the kayak that I'm reviewing today, I think will likely be all three of those things. This is the PH Sea Kayaks Volan 160 Sea Kayak. Now, sea kayaks, which are sometimes referred to as touring kayaks as well, they're used, that term is often used interchangeably. Um, they are designed for, first and foremost, for covering distances. And to do that, they tend to be narrower and longer. And with that, uh, especially with the width, they, they give up some stability to travel faster. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not for beginners. But what it does mean is that flipping in a sea kayak is a real, is a very real possibility. And uh, if you want to take a sea kayak or a touring kayak into anywhere, any distance offshore at all, you it quickly becomes um, pretty much essential that you take a, a touring kayak or a sea kayaking course. But again, it doesn't mean you need to be a highly experienced paddler to paddle these things. You just need to know your limitations and really you should take a course. But that being said, this is what they refer to as a very uh, playful, highly versatile uh, day and weekend sea kayak. It's my job to find out if indeed it does all the things that they say. And so I'm gonna get this thing on the water, give it a good test paddle on the Tennessee River. But before I do, let me tell you a bit more about the Volan 160. The PNH Sea Kayaks Volan 160 retails for between 4,500 and 6,000 US dollars, depending on the layup. It's 16 feet long, it's 23 inches wide, it weighs 42 to 58 pounds, depending on the layup, and it has a max capacity of 265 pounds. Its primary use is all conditions. The boat features large bow and stern hatches, plus a day hatch and an optional bow mini hatch. It's got full deck lines and bungees for storage. It comes with a skeg, but a rudder is an option. It has a padded and contoured seat with a back band and hip pads, and it has a bulkhead in the front and back. Interesting fact, all PNH Sea Kayaks are named after constellations or whiskeys. Now, 4,500 to 6,000 US dollars for a kayak, that's a lot of money, but there's a good reason why. This is a composite kayak. This particular kayak is their Kevlar Carbon Infusion uh, kayak. This is their highest end kayak. You can get this kayak in an expedition weight, which is even beefier, but it's also heavier. This is the lightest one at 42 pounds. Um, but they also have another uh, layup, which is their Kevlar dial in. Uh, it, it's vacuum bagged, it, it's, it's built a different way. It's a little cheaper and a, a little heavier, but still, the joy of composite kayaks are they are light the other joy of composite kayaks is how beautiful they look how beautiful they feel not just on your shoulder you know to the touch but when you're paddling them you feel like you're in a luxury boat and it is a luxury boat the question is is it worth the money and how does it actually perform and so that's why i'm going to get this sucker on the water Stop talking, start paddling.
Well, that was a, an awesome way to test this kayak. It was about a, a seven mile paddle from where the uh, Holston and French Broad Rivers come in right into downtown Knoxville. And I have to say, I did get a number of paddlers along the way comment on the kayak and staring at the kayak like, ooh, that's a nice looking kayak, <laughs> because it is. It is a beautiful kayak, but let me tell you how it actually performed. And starting, as I always do, with, with portability. Now, it's a 16-foot sea kayak. A 16-foot kayak is never going to be easy to move around, but uh, sea kayaks get longer. You can have sea kayaks, you know, 18 feet and more. And so 16 is on the shorter end of sea kayaks, and that makes a difference when you're moving it around and even putting it on your vehicle. Um, but more importantly, it's the 42 pound aspect. A 16 foot kayak being 42 pounds is just, it's awesome. It makes what could be a really difficult boat to move around uh, relatively easy for one person, but a breeze for two people to move around. So, you know, to put it in perspective, actually, uh, last year I tested another 16 foot PHC kayak, but not composite, and it was 62 pounds. That's more, you know, that's what you'd expect from a plastic sea kayak. 62 to 42, you know, that's, it, they've cut a third of the weight off the kayak. That makes a big difference. All right, so paddling though, um, we'll start with stability. Is this thing stable? Well, it's a 23 inch kayak. Uh, no 23 inch kayak is gonna be as stable as a recreational kayak or a day touring kayak that's gonna be closer to 30 inches wide. But for what it is, it is a stable kayak. It's got good primary stability, which is the stability when you're just sitting on the water, not doing anything. You don't feel like, whoa, 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 whoa. And it's got good secondary stability, which is the stability of the kayak when you hold it on edge. Does it like to be on edge? Or when you put it on edge, does it kind of just want to keep going and flip over? I found this kayak had really good primary and secondary stability, which isn't that surprising to me because the hull has got a soft chine. It goes not just round, like a dis which is called displacement hull. It's got a kind of flat, a little round to it, but then it's got a pretty good edge, um, a soft edge, and then it, these sidewalls. And that's a soft chine, a chine being an edge. And that lends itself to, you know, the way it does perform. Great stability for what, what it is. Now, uh, performance. I am, and, and I'll talk about speed and maneuverability at the same time here. Sea kayaks are designed for speed. It's a fast kayak. No big surprise there. It's not the fastest sea kayak by any means. If you want a faster kayak, you'd get a longer kayak and one with less rocker. The Volan has a fair amount of rocker, which is the curvature of the kayak from bow to stern. The joy of having a lot of rocker is that it turns very easily, which it does. You can, for a 16 foot kayak, you can really turn this thing very effectively. Um, it comes with the skeg. And so even though it may not track as well as a longer kayak, sea kayak with, with less rocker, you drop the skeg in. And for me, it tracks perfectly well. <laughs> you know, I love a playful kayak and I do not mind giving up some you know, performance, some speed for a little bit more maneuverability and playfulness. And that's what this kayak does. This is very much my style of sea kayak. And it's very clear with the lot of rocker, the big bow that's kicked up, that's designed to shed water, go through waves. This is a boat that's designed for, to handle any type of water conditions, rough water, calm water, the works. And, and it did that. I didn't get to test it in rough water yet. But I am going to test this in rough water as well. Don't, uh, there's no doubt about that because I enjoyed the paddling experience so much. But um, I have no doubt in my mind that it's going to do great in rough water as well. Comfort. This is the Volan 160. It's the high volume version of the Volan. They have a 158, which is for smaller paddlers. Now, even though it's the bigger model, it almost felt perfect for me. For 
for someone my size. I'm six foot two, I'm 195 pounds. Uh, I've got about 34 inch inseam and it just fit me like a glove. The seat pad and the hip pads in this thing, they're, they're, they're really nice. They're foam, they're contoured, the hip pads hugged me. I actually had to take some sh of the shims in the hip pads out, some of the foam in there, so that I, I was more comfortable in there. And once I did, I was very comfortable. Um, and, it, I, and I got performance, it held me. I felt like I could go into ocean surf, I could go into, into rapids, I could go into anything and have full control of this kayak. That being said, there wasn't much more space to give. Now, I don't have a small butt. I don't have a huge butt. I got probably have a bigger butt than normal, but uh, there's not much extra room here. So a bigger person might find themselves a little tight in here. That's why you gotta, before you buy a boat like this, go and sit in one, make sure you, it, you fit. I, ideally, I mean, if you're a bigger person, it's worth doing that to make sure you fit. Uh, foot space, lots of foot space. The foot pegs or have the foot braces are nice big platforms for your feet. And uh, th there was plenty of room in there for my long legs. So um, comfort wise, you know, really two thumbs up. The only thing to note actually is the on the thigh supports, there isn't these, there aren't aggressive thigh supports. You're really, uh, you're fitting your knees under the boat itself. And what, what I would, will absolutely do with this boat is take foam and pad it out and customize it for my legs to get the right, uh, the padding in the right spot for one thing and get the support in the right spot. But that's what you kind of expect to do when you get uh, a kayak like this. You expect to customize it. I mean, this is a lifetime kayak. So take the time to customize it for yourself. So now let's talk features of this kayak. Now the kayak I have has it will come standard with a skeg, but you can get a rudder. And actually on that note, if you buy this kayak, you can buy one off the shelf the way it is, or you could even go to the PNHC Kayaks website and, uh, and customize your kayak. Choose the exact color you want. Choose the what, rudder or skeg, choose the, the, the outfitting, choose if you want the mini day hatch. You get a bunch of options. And yeah, it's gonna take uh, a few months till you get that kayak, but um, it's an option you have. Anyway, going back to the features of this kayak, it has a skeg. The skeg is controlled uh, with this, the slider system they have is just awesome. It's just so smooth and it's so easy to dial in to what depth you want that skeg. Love the skeg system. Uh, if you prefer rudders, you can get a, a rudder system with toe controlled uh, a rudder, or, you know, again, you can customize it if you want. The benefit of getting a rudder would be you no longer have a skeg box inside the stern hatch. And really what that means is where that skeg comes up inside the back of the boat, there's a, it takes up space in the back of the boat. So if you like doing overnight trips and you want to have as much space as possible, a rudder might be uh, an option. Although the back hatch has got plenty, it's got a lot of space. This one here has four hatches. We've got a bow hatch, stern hatch, a day hatch, and a mini hatch. Now the, the stern hatch and the day hatch or, and the bow hatch are your main hatches for gear. There's the most space there. There's bulkheads to, to separate those from the rest of the boat. Uh, lots of lots of room, relatively speaking. This isn't a big kayak. So this isn't a kayak for, I would say for long expeditions because of that. This is a kayak that for great for weekends, day trips, weekends, long weekends. Uh, because you don't have a ton of space, but there's pretty good space. Now, the day hatch behind uh, the seat I've said this before for, that's very common. Most sea kayaks are a lot of sea kayaks. Myself, you know, a personal preference of mine would be just to have one big hatch back there. That's such a personal preference though. I, I can't, that, that's not a knock on this kayak whatsoever. Um, what I can say is this mini day hatch or mini hatch up front is, I love having a mini hatch here. I find this 
just such great dead space otherwise. It doesn't impede my legs. It didn't impede my legs whatsoever. And there's enough room in this hatch here to easily throw uh, sunscreen, phone, snacks. You know, you're not gonna fit a water bottle there, but uh, maybe just a little one you could, but uh, but lots of room for for uh, quite, a bit of quite a bit of gear that you just want easy access to. So to sum it all up, who is this kayak for? Well, it is, it's an expensive kayak. 4,500 to $6,000, you're paying for a composite kayak, a kayak that it's light, it looks beautiful, it feels beautiful to paddle, it's a lifetime kayak. This is a kayak that you, there's no reason if you treat it well that you shouldn't have this really forever. And so if you look at it that way, then the amount of money you spend on it is very reasonable. You break that down over 25 years and okay, it's not so bad, but still it's not for everyone. You know, this is a big purchase for most people. Um, so it's for people who can afford it first and foremost. Secondly, it's for people that really value having a lightweight kayak, something that's lighter, are happy to, to pay a little premium for that or a big premium. Um, it's for people who want an all round sea kayak, something that they can take into the rough water, something they could take to ocean surf, something they could do, you know, really it, that could just handle rough conditions that pop up if you're in exposed water. If you're someone who is never going to put yourself in that scenario, that situation, then you might want to get a kayak that has less rocker, that's designed less to handle those, those uh, conditions, and it's just it's going to travel a little faster. Or if you want to do longer trips, you may want to get a different uh, type of kayak, different model that has a bit more storage space for more gear. For me, <laughs> this is kind of my, this, I, I said it before, this is my type of kayak. It's not only is it a beautiful kayak and it does it, pad, it paddles beautifully, but it's, uh, it does what I want from a kayak. It can handle anything. You, you get boat wake, boat waves, you can surf those boat waves. You get to ocean surf, you can surf the ocean surf. You get into rough water, you can play around in rock gardens. But at the same time, you can load this thing up for a, a long weekend and go explore in the flat water. So absolutely two thumbs up for this kayak. And uh, this is going to be a lifetime kayak for me too. So don't anyone leave a comment down below saying, are you selling it? Can I get a deal on it? No, uh, there's no way I'm going to sell this kayak. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know about your experience with uh, composite sea kayaks and if you find that it's been worth it, worth the money. And uh, that's all I got to say. Stay tuned for more paddling gear reviews, paddling tips, and paddling adventures like the one I had with this one on the Tennessee River here in Knoxville.